Well, I'm the Labour parliamentary candidate for Sutton and Cheam in South West London, and I've asked, been asked to come along to you, talk to you today um, about my experience um, as a disabled uh, person standing for Parliament, seeking to be the first blind woman uh, to um, enter the House of Commons, but also my experience two months ago um, coming out as both a gay woman and also as transgender, the first um, transgender uh, woman uh, to stand for Parliament from a major UK-wide political party of government. Um, this, of course, brings its challenges, and um, I'll say something about that uh, in a moment. But my political journey very much started on Merseyside some 40 years ago as a child, indeed on the picket line, at a time when my sight was failing. And at that moment, we needed to come to London for the first time in my life to, experience, to undertake some specialist treatment and advice at Moorfields Eye Hospital, but we couldn't afford it. And that was because of the constant strike action at that time. In order to address that problem, the shop steward went along the picket line and collected so that my family could bring me to London. And it was that kind of solidarity that I recall in a practical way as a child that helped. Now, I wasn't able uh, to have my sight restored and indeed it continued to fail. But we came back and as a result of having some money left over, I bought a braille machine that still sits on my desk today, 40 years on, enabling me to hammer out attack lines on the coalition government and for other political purposes. So little did those trade unionists know what that picket line gesture would have achieved. And they are the kinds of things we can do in a small way as people that can have long-term lasting implications. It's also why, as a child, I operation after I operation, time and time again, going to hospital, that means that I am passionate about our NHS and why I keep speaking out so strongly against the coalition's policies on privatizing our health services. But also, throughout life, coming up from Merseyside in a working class family, going to a Catholic boarding school which was segregated, blind children from the sighted world, having limited access to information. All that meant for me was that I couldn't realize my true self for many years. I didn't have a sense of autonomy. I didn't, I wasn't able to live the woman I felt. And that stayed with me despite trying to normalize with a successful career, getting married, having two great children. It still never left me and grew year on year, even as depression sank in. So much so that ultimately I did do what I felt for so long was the impossible and transition physically to align with my emotional sense of being female, about trying to be authentic, being for authentic, my true self, which I've now been since uh, the last several or eight years. As a politician, I felt, although I'd been living privately, as Emily, I felt it was important in this time when politics has been broken by so many people in terms of trust. It was essential for me to be honest. And as my profile increased, I felt it was time to come out. If not, perhaps a newspaper would out me like so many people before in a negative way. And it was important for me to be positive. And I was amazed when I spoke to Pink News 
Again, the great solidarity I had across the labor and trade union movement, but also the wider community, both in Sutton and across the nation. People who found, I find it very humbling that they found my story inspiring. And very much about the resilience that I needed and so many other people need in order just to live our lives as ourselves. Is that so much to ask for, to seek, to achieve? Of course, there are some doubters. There are some people who will mock and reach for the tools of ridicule. And Rod Little was one of those in the sun who asked how, as a blind person, fingers, how did I know I was the wrong sex? That caused an outrage across the country. My retort, though, was when Rod, Rod Little turns the lights out at night, how does he know he's a man? <laughs> now, it was this point I did ask the organizers to switch the lights off, but for technical reasons, that isn't possible because, um, and I, maybe it's because somebody is called Rod here, and maybe they're frightened of the dark. But I want to say to you, or ask you, anybody here, how is there, we've got a man here, and who would like to be, own up to be a man and tell us why you feel you're a man? What would you say to Rod? Any volunteers? What about the gentleman in red to my left, I believe? Why are you a man? Somebody said you were a man, but are you? Why? What makes you believe that? interesting question. I kind of thought there some obvious answers, and they didn't really seem very right. Right. Any other ideas? Any ladies? Or anybody who believes they're a woman that um, would like to volunteer an, I an answer in terms of your own identity? I will. Go on. So, for me, and so many people who are, have a transsexual background, it is about how we feel. It's about a sense of congruence. It's about when we go through that transitional process. It's very much about bringing our physical characteristics in line with our inner sense of how we feel about who we are. And I think, as people, in, in terms of what we want to achieve in life, when we have a sense of contentment about how we feel, we can then work inwards to outwards to be able to hopefully change our lives and people around us to influence. That's what I seek to do as a, as, as a parent, as a politician, um, and in terms of my career, and in terms of my interaction with other people. The other key thing is though it takes a huge amount of resilience in order to come through that kind of transition. It isn't just about getting the clothes right and the makeup and all that kind of stuff. It's also about the it's also about the interaction with other people. It's also about understanding who you are and seeking to achieve a sense of peace, but also acceptance from other people. And acceptance from other people can be very challenging. People have mental health problems as a result of going through this kind of transition. And it is, in many ways, very difficult. But 
I hope that I and some other people can demonstrate what we might have felt was impossible is very possible. So in terms of my experience, in any time we've got left, and I don't know how long, um, three minutes, uh, any quick questions to me. And of course, afterwards, people can come and ask uh, any questions they like. Any quick questions about politics, about gender, about disability? Very quickly about Lord Little. I wrote to him, so, yes. uh, objecting strenuously about uh, what he had done in the name mm. of the Sun. And I was written back to by him, so, to say that unless I was related to him, I could not complain. And since the Sun had done this in front of its four million readers, if the Ipso, which is supposed to be instead of proper press complaints commission has fallen on the very first day. But I don't think, I mean, that's not relative entirely to you, but it just demonstrated what a rubbish outfit it is. I have a lot of concerns with uh, press regulation, and I'll be saying more about that at Cambridge Union this week. Um, but uh, hundreds of complaints have gone to Ipso. Um, I have endorsed a complaint from Transmedia Watch and that is going forward as a representative complaint. So it is at the moment going through due process and um, hopefully um, some resolution will be found um, and uh, watch out um, for what might happen. Anybody else? Even to my right. Sorry? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, just about. Okay. Um, on a personal basis, I want to. Um, on a personal basis, I want to go forward as a mainstream politician um, and represent people in well, so many ways. Particularly around health, that's something I feel passionate about about the NHS. But I want to be a mainstream politician. I don't want to be you know, basically you know, the trans politician or the disabled politician. I, those experiences bring value, I think, added value, but it doesn't define me. It helps to shape my experience and how I go forward. So I want to be a mainstream politician, but it isn't just to be a mainstream politician for its sake. It is in order to bring about change. It is in order to make life for people, generations in the future, disabled people, people with a transsexual history, to act as a role model, to be able to contribute so their path is much easier. And if I can do that in some small way, then I've contributed.